We welcome you back on the Sports Mix. We're now going to be joined by the host of the Full Court Press podcast, Michael Sussman and Anthony Lewis. Nick Verzalini alongside me, Colin McLaughlin and Dylan Bishop on the show here today. How are you guys doing today? Michael and Doing great. We're great. Thank you. So you guys are going to be joined each week by former WVU head coach Bob Huggins. And I know uh, this episode that you have premiering tomorrow is a big one. Just kind of, I guess, get into some of the things that you can tease for uh, the episode tomorrow. Um, yeah, well, uh, we're just uh, going to talk about uh, the, the game tonight to start with uh, the Mountaineers getting the season underway. Uh, and as it pertains to, to Bob Huggins, of course, that's what everybody's uh, waiting for. We're, we're going to address some of the headlines that he made over the summer and uh, just kind of, kind of delve into to some of the issues, some of the things that a coach wants to get off his chest and, and some things that I'm sure fans want to hear. All right, then let's get into tonight's game tipping off at 7 p.m. against Missouri State. What are your guys' initial thoughts on tonight's matchup? Yeah, obviously, um, if you look at Missouri State last year, they, they won 17 games. So I think West Virginia is going to face a pretty competitive uh, opponent. And, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of questions um, that need to be answered moving forward for this Mountaineers team, just with the, obviously with the new coaching staff, um, the, the shuffle of the players in and out throughout the course of the summer. Uh, how will they come together? And, of course, you know, you've got a suspension uh, with your guard. So um, West Virginia will have some questions to answer tonight. And um, I'm hoping – uh, we can uh, we'll have some good news for everybody tomorrow as far as about their victory. But you know, personally, I, I'm pretty excited just to see what type of um, team they're going to be. I know we got a good look at them against George Mason, but um, you know, and there was a couple of surprises there. But I, I, this will be real game action, and I'm excited to see what type of uh, basketball team we're going to be looking at this season. And I think you're right. This is the Dylan here. Just that there's a lot of questions on this team. But if you, if in your mind, your guys' mind, if there's only one question that could be answered by this game tonight or just in the early part of the season, what what would that main question be in your guys' mind? I think how do you utilize Jesse Edwards, the Syracuse transfer, and how frequently, how many shots a game are we trying uh, to to get him to take? Because um, he's going to be the centerpiece. He's somebody that can post up, that can step out and hit the jump shot. Uh, so how do you utilize him? Do you go to him in the high post? Uh, do you try to set him up on the screen and roll? And then who's going to emerge as that, that outside shooter? I'm thinking Seth Wilson. I think he'll be more involved this year. Uh, to me, it's outside shooting. And, and how do we make Jesse Edwards a superstar this year? You know, and for me, obviously, we didn't see the the Bob Huggins defense, right, against George Mason in the scrimmage. So defensively, I'm curious to see if they can clean that up. And, and I'm going to echo uh, part of what Michael said. For me, um, I've always been a firm believer that championships and runs, in the, especially in the NCAA tournament, run through your guards. So I'm curious to see, you know, how the, the guards are going to develop and see how far that they can take us. You know, Edwards, um, you know, just from our – initial look is uh, the real deal so you're going to have to be able to shoot from the outside so they can't just crash on him and bottle him up down in the post so uh, guard play is going to be big for West Virginia so hopefully they can get it together you guys are going to be joined weekly on the show by coach Huggins Uh, how did that kind of come about and I guess what's it been like to have, have him around sure so uh, um, well, you know, this is our second season of doing uh, Full Court Press, um, you know, with the radio affiliates, and, and also we, we archive everything to put the podcast uh, through Apple and Spotify. But the president of the company, uh, HD Media, and uh, Tom Sussman approached us about, a, uh, you know, because you know, with the football show, we have Avon Coburn in the same cast, and they just talked about maybe adding Coach Huggins and swapping out for Avon during basketball season. So, um, you know, when you have an opportunity to to add, obviously, someone with the name of Bob Huggins, who's in the Hall of Fame, 900 victories, and, and I've said this several times, he's probably forgot more basketball than I've ever known. Um, it's just a great opportunity to, to work with the guy, and we've gone up probably three or four times just to get getting to know him a little better and visit with him and 
you know, talk to him about what we're going to be doing this season. And um, he seems to be really excited about uh, the opportunity to talk hoops and um, and kind of, uh, you know, let the people of West Virginia know. Um, you know, he's got a few things he wants to talk about. But then also, too, just let the people of West Virginia know that he, he still knows basketball and he's still around. Let's take a look at the roster now for this year's team. And we kind of mentioned the one suspension already to Kerr. We have a few players that were deemed ineligible by the NCAA, and that's what I kind of wanted to get to first. I'm not sure if you guys have heard any rumblings about potentially the NCAA responding to Attorney General Patrick Morrissey's request to have an answer back from the ineligibility uh denial for Raekwon battle or not? Um, I personally have, have not heard anything. It, it, it kind of seems like West Virginia is getting picked on on some of these eligibility rulings, Raekwon battle being the most recent one. Uh, as it pertains to, to the Attorney General, though, I'm, I'm, I've not heard. Anthony, have you? I, I've not heard much um, as far as, um, you know, if, if he's heard a response. I know that he's publicly came out and, and tried to put a little pressure on uh, the NCAA along with the governor. And I think the same tactic was used down in North Carolina to help get a, a football player um, eligible down there. But, you know, you know, my personal opinion on the NCAA is I don't think they really know what's going on out there sometimes. Um, you know, they just kind of pick up paperwork and shuffle paperwork around and, and there's really no rhyme or reason to some of their rulings and things that they take up. I mean, you know, my, my biggest complaint with it is if you've got a guy on a wiretap uh, talking about paying players and he doesn't get suspended or, you know, or doesn't get in much trouble, but then, you know, you got a kid that wants to transfer because his coach was fired the year before and you, and you don't make him eligible, uh, it doesn't seem like they've got their ducks in a row out there. And I've always assumed that the NCAA was supposed to be for the players, and they don't seem to be proving that in my eyes. The NCAA doesn't even know what the NCAA is anymore. <laughs> the fact that they're still trying to legislate anything is beyond me. Yeah. So one of the newest wrinkles that was thrown into the season coming out was the suspension of, of Kirk Carissa uh, coming into you know the first nine games of the season. Uh, how do you guys think that that's going to affect the early part of the season? And when he comes back, what sort of impact do you think that we're going to we're going to have from him? Um, it's it's a huge impact. Uh, you're, you're talking about an established player at Arizona last season. Uh, to Anthony's point, you, you build your team largely around your point guard. And, and when you just thought about the potential of that 1-2 game with Edwards and Creesa, uh, that ultimately is where West Virginia is, is probably going to lay its head down this season. And so now you're in a situation where nine games into the season, those two are getting comfortable with each other. And, and it's, it's going to be tough. I think chemistry will be the hardest thing to figure out once he comes back. Yeah, it, you know, and, and that is the, the issue. And, and that could be some, you know, potentially be a problem early in the season if, if, if you know, the teams that, are, that West Virginia are going to play, um, you know, are strategically picked because they're actually – decent team. Some of these smaller schools may end up making runs or getting in their conference championship games. You know, they, they are strategically picked to help your RPI. And so that means they're going to be good teams, most of them. And I think we're going to see a good one tonight with the Missouri State. But when when you have issues at the guard position, um, that could definitely disrupt your offense. So, you know, I'm hoping that West Virginia can kind of come through this nine games um, unscathed and, um, you know, and, and get him back in there and get him in the mix because it's a long season, but this is the time where you're supposed to be building chemistry, like Michael said, and, you know, you, you need to get – these reps in there, and especially when you're talking about a new coaching staff, a new offensive philosophy, and a lot of new faces on this roster. You mentioned the new uh, coaching staff, and Coach Eiler, he's been with WVU for 16 years uh, in different roles, but he's in this interim role right now. Do you think that he'll have a legitimate shot to earn the full-time head coaching position long-term, or do you think they might try to still go in a different direction no, no matter how Coach Eilert does this season? I, I think they will try to go in another direction eventually. I, I just don't know if, if Ren Baker coming in as athletic director when he did gave him enough time uh, to really make a call, especially with how much of the roster was already built. 
Um, what he does have going for him this season is a, is a great coaching staff with Demar Johnson. You bring in Deshaun Butler uh, as well. Yeah, Alex Ruoff was already there, so you have people that are familiar uh, with coaching around him, people that he knows, and hopefully he can carry some of those Bob Huggins le- lessons with him. And right now he's talking about playing a little more up tempo, playing a little more free flowing. Uh, so you could see a, a new look Mountaineers this season, but you would think that the administration probably wants to go uh, with their established guy. There were rumors they made a play at John Beeline and it didn't work out uh, ahead of the Eilert situation. I think they'll go through the full process, the search committees, the short lists, uh, that whole deal after. Yeah, and I'll echo that. I mean, unfortunately, unless they make a run to the Final Four or or even beyond, I, I think that, um, you know, Gordon Gee and, and Rim Baker are going to take a look at an outside candidate after this. And, um, you know, they kind of had their, you know, hands tied behind their back because they were in a position this summer when they were trying to do it where basically these coaches they were interviewing could just name their price. And I think they looked at that and looked at some of the situations and said, let's just keep this staff in place so we don't lose the entire roster and let's see what happens. And uh, I think, I mean, I think they'll, they'll get an opportunity to interview. Um, and hopefully the season goes well enough to where they're seriously considered, uh, to stay. And, and I do like the approach that, um, they are recruiting. And they are planning as if they are the long-term coaching staff. So that that gives me a little hope that um, you know they're going to put all all their effort into uh, this season. Keeping on a new situation, let's talk about conference expansion. As there's four new teams into the mix of the Big 12, really adding on to the toughness of Big 12 basketball. Just looking at the new conference and how it looks this year with the 14 teams, how do you feel like West Virginia will fare in the conference this year? Um, It's going to be an uphill battle. The Big 12 always is. Uh, You just saw the league just beat each other up so much last season, and and WVU started out 0-5. And And a lot of that just had to do with cold shooting. I think Eric Stevenson kind of had to figure out where to take his shots. Fast forward into this season, it's even tougher, and the main addition is Houston. That's a Final Four caliber program. That's a national championship contender in a league that already had a bunch of them. Uh, So West Virginia, it's hard to tell. I think think it's going to be a struggle, to be completely honest. Yeah, I mean, you look at the conference, and, and, and like Michael said, it's one of the toughest in the country, right? So you you add um, Houston to the mix, who, by the way, West Virginia opens with in conference play in January. So you immediately have to go to Houston, and then um, you know, and then play Kansas and the rest of these teams, Iowa State and Oklahoma. I mean, West Virginia struggled at Oklahoma over the years, you know, you know, and then moving forward. You're adding teams like Utah and Arizona to the mix, uh, then along with Houston and then some of the newcomers. And, you know, Cincinnati's not a walk in the park. They've usually got a good basketball program. So the Big 12, basketball-wise, has improved. And West Virginia is going to have their hands full this season. And it just seems like every time we turn around, you know, the Big East at one point was noted as one of the toughest or the toughest conference in the in the nation. And now... West Virginia is right in the mix, uh, playing in the Big 12, which is not a cakewalk. So, you know, I think Baylor's going to be a good team this year. Um, you know, and then, of course, you've got Kansas, so you've got to deal with them. So um, West Virginia has their hands full, and, um, and I'm hoping that this team can come together quick do this non-conference portion and uh, get ready for Houston because uh, they're going to have their hands full. All right, guys, thank you for joining us on the show. Again, that was... Uh, Michael Sussman and Anthony Lewis of the Full Court Press Podcast. You can hear the podcast Tuesdays here on Talk Radio WRNR from 4 to 5 p.m., as well as the Touchdown City Podcast from 4 to 5. Anything else you guys want to plug uh, before we let you go? Yeah, and if, if the listeners just need information or want to follow us on social media, for Touchdown City, they can go to touchdowncity.com, and then uh, the website that's set up for Full Court Press is pressvirginia.com, and they can check all that stuff out at those two websites. All right, thank you guys. Let's go Mountaineers. Go Mountaineers. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you.